Dear guests, uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome everybody, also on behalf of Annette Hoffman and Gerhard Wolf, to the event of Tuesday afternoon, which will be the last of this kind of seminars of uh, this season. The lecture series, Aesthetics, Art and Architecture in the Caucasus, hosted by the Historicians Institute in Florence in collaboration with Chubinashvili National Center for Georgian Art and uh, Heritage Preservation, uh, lasted for two years. And we organized uh, already in total 16 um, seminars and we're honored to, to host most of the prominent scholars to, together with the young researchers in uh, our field. Almost all talks were recorded and they are published at Chubinashvili Center YouTube channel. Before I introduce our speaker, let me remind you several practical matters. We kindly request you do not record this seminar because it is recorded by the Institute. And please mute your mic microphones during the lecture. Discussion panel uh, will follow the talk, the presentation, and it will be, um, uh, it will be moderated by my colleague, Annette Hoffman. Now I'm especially um, delighted to welcome and introduce our today's speaker, Professor Zia Janjalia, who is a senior research fellow at Chubinashvili National Center for Georgian Art History and Heritage Preservation and associate professor at the Faculty of Restoration, Art History and Theory, Tbilisi Academy of Arts. Her research centers on medieval Georgian art and covers issues of medieval cultural identities, intercultural relations, and cultural transfer. Her interest lies in methodology, methodologies of cultural heritage preservation and conservation. She was involved in the restoration projects of such outstanding monuments in Georgia as Varzia and Atenisioni in collaboration with the Cortal Institute at the University of Applied Sciences and Arts of Southern Switzerland. Uh, she took an active role in public awareness for the preservation of the Gelati Monastery. Zia Janjalia obtained her doctoral degree in 1994 with the dissertation entitled St. Nino Cycle in Mural Paintings of Bodbe Monastery Church. She has got several scholarships and awards and participated in many scientific events. Her research had been funded by the fellowships from Europe, European Union, Friends of um, uh, uh, Academic Research in Georgia, Swiss National Science, Science Foundation, Paul Getty Foundation, National Agency for Cultural Heritage Preservation of Georgia, and Shota Rustaveli National Science Foundation. She is the author and co-author of several publications. Among them uh, are the um, a series of bilingual books on uh, the Georgian cities, Esenzheta, Tbilisi, and Kutaisi, uh, a Georgian Christian Community in the Holy Land, published in 2022, Cross-Cultural Features in Medieval Art, the case of the early 14th century wall painting at the Monastery of Holy Cross in Jerusalem, uh, Trend versus Cultural Context in Medieval Art, the case of the Gerant's painting, both published in the Convivium in 2020 and in 2018, respectively. Medieval Art and Modern Approaches, a new look at the Achtala paintings, also published in Convivium, but in Convivium Supplemental, the Middle South Caucasus, Artistic Cultures of Albania, Armenia, and Georgia, edited by Ivan Folletti and Eric Tuno in 2016. 
And Zhe Janjali has been on board of several academic pub, uh, publications in Georgia, as Academia, Journal of Academy of Arts, Iberica Caucasica, published by the Center for Exploration of Georgian Antiquities, and the Georgian Antiquities, pu published by the Chubinashvili Center. Currently, she represents Chubinashvili National Research Center in the joint project with the Kekelidze National Center of Manuscript and the uh, Institute of History and Ethnology, Ethnology at Tbilisi State University. And the project is titled Georgia and Byzantine Commonwealths, Politics, Culture, and Identity on the Imperial Frontiers, 11th century. This project is also funded by Rustavili National Science Foundations and uh, some major findings of her research we are going to, to hear today in her talk entitled In Search of Cultural Identity Markers, a case study on 11th century Georgian religious art. Zia, virtual floor is yours. Many thanks for introduction. Is it okay? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's start. First of all, many thanks to you for organizing this very important platform and thank you for having me here and giving opportunity to present some of my considerations and this piece of research. And hello to everybody and thanks to everyone who attends this presentation. I would like to make a couple of just a couple of comments before we go to the topic. First of all, it's part of the project, as Iran already told, and these issues were for me inspiration for this kind of cooperation. The, um, another comment is regarding the text, the full version of the text with references and more details, I hope will be published soon till the end of the year, maybe, and will be dedicated to Dimitri Fumanishvili and Tamila Galublishvili. And the last comment, not least, here too, I would like to express my special thanks to Father Andrew Wade and Stig Simeon Froschel for their kind support and communication that has been very important for me. Okay, let's start. Uh, the focus of the presentation is 11th century for the several reasons. First of all, uh, this is one of the most famous among the periods of Georgian uh, medieval culture and art. Secondly, it's very important period uh, for the unification of Georgian church and Georgian kingdom, and not only for the cultural <laughs> turn toward Constantinople. You wouldn't find, you almost wouldn't find any text on medieval Georgian culture not mentioning 11th century as some kind of threshold, a start of gold, Georgian golden age, uh, which lasted from 11th century to uh, the mid 13th till Mongol invasions. You'll find landmarks of the period also, mainly the uh, shift of uh, liturgy towards Jerusalem practice to the one of Constantinopolitan. And uh, religious, bringing in religious knowledge based on translation and literary activities of Georgian ethnic monks. You'll find a mentioning of minor Synaxarian compiled by Athemius the Hagiorite in late 10th century. That means the uh, short version of the Typicon of the Great Church of Constantinople and the Great Synaxarian compiled by George the Hagiorite in 1042. That means the full version of the same Typicon combined with the elements of Studios Monastery and Athanasius the Great Laura Typica. Also, it's well known that soon after church reform from 12th century onward, during the reign of kings uh, David the Building, Queen Tamar, there is partial reverse to the Palestinian traditions. Uh, it was manifested in use of Sabbath Typicon in Georgian church. But also we know that Hagiorite Typica were known till 14th, 15th century 
and the sabite one was combined with ethanid elements. That's very shortly about the liturgical text. And uh, though the role is in Jerusalem for Georgian culture is widely known, still the turn towards Constantinople was so important, so irreversible, that uh, in Georgian studies, uh, Jerusalem is, uh, the mention of Jerusalem is mainly relevant for early Middle Ages, uh, maximum 10th century, including 10th century. The changes are also visible in Georgian religious art. Here too, uh, the main examples are quite famous and uh, published a lot of times. You would meet, uh, Elimination of Georgian manuscripts ascribed mainly in monasteries of Antioch and Constantinople and bringing in new trends to Georgian lands. You'll uh, meet enamels decorating Georgian churches, uh, Georgian uh, icons, uh, famous uh, enamels from famous Hahuli icon among them, witnessing the role of imperial gifts in the process. Examples of metalwork, examples of stonework. These are altarpieces from him, from important Georgian churches. Examples of wall paintings and Atheni murals, uh, the most famous among them, highly appreciated for its quality, for adoption of Byzantine trends. So at one glass, uh, the picture is absolutely clear and there is nothing to think of. There is no space for further interpretations. But at the same time, looking back to the material, you still find that the picture in fact is not as simple as that. First of all, the overwhelming Hellenophile trend of Georgian religious art should be questioned. There are a number of examples showing the variety of tastes among commissions of Georgian uh, secular and ecclesiastical elites, and even in the choices of one and the same person. For example, we have reliefs of the most important Georgian cathedrals, but it's Hoveli Cathedral, which are so different from the so-called progressive works of the time. And we know well it's important commission on Catholicos Melchizedek and his admiration for uh, Byzantine imperial gifts and icons. Uh, similar situation is with the reliefs of Katsuhi Church. The famous Alaverdi Gospels uh, was donated to Katsuhi as it was burial church of uh, Bahwashi noble, noble family. And less likely that Ivane Bahwashi thought that reliefs on his family church of, are, are various or of um, lower quality than uh, miniatures of uh, the manuscript gifted by him. Uh, century later, King the, the Builder uh, Donated a 10th century processional cross to the Galatians commissioned by the king for the Catholicon of the monastery. The same, less likely that the king thought that the cross of less importance. But still, all these are speculations and may easily be that it's just subjective and representation of the um, position. The most uh, more interesting is that we have number of cases showing coexistence of different artistic trends in the works of one and the same workshop. For example, in Athene murals, uh, which is so widely known for adopting of Byzantine trends, the differences in uh, the works of artists and the difference was enough for scholars in the major works to make some kind of qualitative ranking of the paintings and speak about master uh, artists working in the sanctuary and other artists somehow subordinated to him in other parts of the church. And Atene is not unique. We have a lot of cases 
of this kind in stonework, in murals like Oshki, Hachuli, like Nikotsminda. It's before 11th century, in 11th century, after 11th century, murals of Vardzia. Mm, uh, main church of Bardzia Monastery, and all of these are commissions of the high uh, social circles. Uh, and they show that tastes are really different, they vary much. But at the same time, uh, these um, can be explained by some, uh, by the culture itself. Well, one can say that this is culture on the outskirts. It's so far from the metropolis and they are not in fact aware of the developments. And that's the reason of these stylistic mixtures in, in the religious art. And in fact, uh, the consideration depends on the position of scholar. And though there are a number of very important works by very important scholars ch challenging uh, and talking about methodological problems of aesthetic perception of medieval work of art and this center periphery scheme, still it's firmly established. And if you look at publications, you find that the most of publication on orthodox art still are based on this approach, which creates serious problems. So it's obvious that better to look at conscious choices, which really do not leave room for interpretations. And for this case, Athen is also very uh, important and we have very, very uh, interesting uh, solution for uh, the dome, the sphere of the dome. There is cross, to be more precise, exaltation of the cross. So the uh, original uh, cross patterned in stone was added by painted the precious um, 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 by uh, figures of angels and precious stones, and they've got. Uh, scene of exaltation of the cross, though of course they knew that uh, in Byzantine system when they uh, adopted. Uh, it was the pl place for Christ Pentocrator. As Athene system, also widely known, uh, that uh, differs markedly from uh, Georgian murals with either partial decoration or with the uh, Christ in majesty in sanctuary or daisies. It uh, features Virgin in the sanctuary uh, cycles, of uh, his cycles in the apses. Everything is okay, despite the cross, they, they're keeping cross in the dome. And everyone more or less familiar with Georgian medieval art knows that the theme of the cross is firmly traditional for Georgia, and that we have uh, rock hewn crosses, crosses patterned in stone, started from the sixth century onward. We have painting crosses and different uh, iconography of the uh, image like cross held by flying angels, cross without angels. The numerous publications on the theme, of course, the major work is by Tina Tin Birtalaza on Georgian dome decorations. And we know much about this image and about context of the image, about eschatological meaning of the image, but still there are some bigger points. Uh, it concerns, uh, first of all, the exact meaning and exact source of different iconographic versions. The image of the glorification of the cross and exaltation of the cross is uh, connected in uh, publications with the Jerusalem feast of exaltation of the cross, either of the apparition of the cross or the local phase of the apparition of, uh, of the cross in Tzcheta, its episode from the a chronicle of conversion of Carthage. Uh, the uh, situation is so vague that even the title of the image is not firmly established. And you'll, you'll uh, meet several naming of the image like glorification of the cross, ascension of the cross, apparition of the cross. Though the name of the of the image we know exactly from documentary evidence, it's inscribed on Gatsky relief from the 11th century, 
Joarisa Amakhleva. And the relief is long before, long published by Vartan Peridze and Tina Timbirsaladze. But the point is that the Georgian image is, uh, and the, the title Joarisa uh, Amakhleva, Exaltation of the Cross, coincides with the most important feast of the cross, of the exaltation of the cross from 14 September. But the point is that Georgian image is so different from traditional Byzantine iconography of the exaltation of the cross that it created ground for scholars uh, for the desire to split somehow Georgian image from the Byzantine iconography, which is firmly linked with this feast. Even they uh, preferred uh, mainly to use for name essential ascension of the cross, the name which is linked with, associated with ascension of Christ and not exaltation of the cross. Uh, the significance of the cross in domes of the Georgian churches cannot be overestimated. Uh, given a firmly established tradition of ecclesiastical mural painting in the Byzantine world and its links to religious texts and liturgy, the issue attracts even more interest due to the fact that other forms of Georgian religious visual culture have also preserved examples attesting to the special veneration of the cross. Uh, I mean, uh, the cross and exaltation of the cross images in many reliefs decorating church facades dating from early Middle Ages through the 11th century. Also, the tradition of erecting stone crosses in early medieval times. Uh, this tradition have become subject of scholarly deliberations due to its possible connection with Jerusalem's stational liturgy. In this regard, uh, publications by Kitty Machiavelli and Ergo Schnorzner should be mentioned. Numerous pre-altar crosses from different regions of Georgia, embellished with precious metal rig, and dating from the period from 10th, 11th century and later, should be mentioned. These pre-altar crosses resulted in associations with the episode of the elevation of the cross from the conversion of Carter, the same one in some publications, but what is more uh, important, it resulted in an increasing call for the study of the prolonged relevance of Jerusalem traditions in Georgia. In this regard, very important article by Dimitri Tumanishvili should be mentioned. A certain affinity uh, between Georgian pre-altar crosses and Syrian bimas have also been suggested by Dimitri Tumanishvili and Emma Lossle. Most importantly, Georgian pre-altar crosses are viewed as evidence of the existence of services equivalent to processions and prayers held at Ruchem which were referred to in Tales of Agelia, one of the chief sources of the Jerusalem liturgy. And one, what is the most important of the author of this consideration is Anton Baumstar in his comparative liturgy. And he um, has written this long, long ago in 1958. The importance of the cross as a reflection of Jerusalem traditions is uh, long noted in pre athenic Georgian uh, liturgical texts. It means a multitude of the cross feasts, including local feasts. So along with 14 September, exaltation of the cross, they had apparition of the cross celebrated on 7th May and 29th of January. They had feast of apparition of the cross in Tsheta, feast of the true cross of Mangalisim. Also, cross veneration days celebrated on Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, the old Yadgari, uh, that is uh, early Jerusalem hymnal of the Tropologian, Georgian version of this Tropologian, uh, has survived so-called Jvarisani, hymns of the cross, 
hymns dedicated to the cross. And these hymns were sung during every Sunday. Jerusalem Station on Liturgy, adopted by the Georgian Church, is referenced in Kartli Schobreba, the Georgian collection of chronicles. It has also been suggested that the story of the conversion of Kartli and the role of the cross in the conversion of Georgia reflects Jerusalem traditions. In this respect, a very important works by uh, Sebastian Van Asbrock um, and Tamilam Galoblishvili should be mentioned. The local feast of the operation of the cross in Tsheta, the fact that it definitely recalls the Jerusalem practices is evidence, uh, but the fact that hymnals of Jerusalem feast of 14 September, a 7th of May, used to be sung during its celebrations. At the same time, the Georgianization of the cross stream through the establishment of local feasts is, of course, very important as scholars have paid attention to this trend. And it is thought to have served as an important identity marker. And very important to underline that uh, these are uh, um, fact the fact of georgianization of the theme of the cross finds parallels with the Christian cultures linked with the Jerusalem liturgy, like Armenian, Syriac, Coptic, etc. Uh, the central importance of the cross for all Christian cultures and its universal meaning as of the symbol of salvation and victory has long been acknowledged, and I'm sure there's no need of wasting of your time on this. However, uh, it is also known that a clear shift in Constantinopolitan trends of the post iconoclastic period also affected the cult of the cross, which was associated with Jerusalem. As despite being a general Christian symbol, the cult of the cross was marked by cultural and time related peculiarities. Well, uh, there is nothing unusual uh, about the presence of obvious links with Jerusalem in the Georgian religious art of the early medieval period. On the con uh, contrary, it would be even strange uh, having liturgical affiliations with Jerusalem uh, with no uh, manifestations in visual culture. As uh, long noted that Georgian liturgical practice of the time is one of the principal instances of the Jerusalem liturgy. Has the veneration of the cross before the 10th, 11th century threshold appears common. What looks more intriguing and interesting is that the theme persisted in various representations of visual culture for quite a long uh, after 11th century church reform. Um, it, lasted through the latter half of the 13th century, at least, or even during the whole Middle Ages. Uh, looking at the material and the picture, impossible not to have questions. How plausible is it that the cross represented in the high zone of Georgian churches and enormous pre alto crosses standing in the interiors were accidental or merely expression of cultural inertia or memoria? How plausible is it that religious art through, this, through its mainstream commissions, and it should be underlined through its mainstream commissions, took its own path and evolved differently from liturgical traditions, not for a while, but throughout the centuries. These questions make us to look back to historical sources preserved and they allow for certain ambivalence about the new trends. On the one hand, it is without doubt that the Georgian elite fully embraced the ecclesiastical turn. Moreover, there is strong documentary evidence showing that Georgians found it critically important to ensure Byzantines and the genuineness of their faith as differences often caused tensions and led to the blaming of Georgian monks for heresy. On the other hand, 
the importance of the cross and Jerusalem traditions for Georgians also have a lot of examples. First of all, of note are elements of royal coronation ceremony, cross bearer, tree of life, the cross, and hymns of the apparition of the cross in Jerusalem, sung during the ceremony. We uh, find Jerusalem cross on David the Builder's, one of, the, uh, one of his copper coins. This one is recently found and it's type of famous British Museum coin. The Jerusalem cross is found on the Royal Seal dated from a uh, period between 12th and 14th century. It was 11th century when considerable efforts were made in the Holy Land for the establishment and embellishment of the Georgian, most important Georgian local sanctus, and it was connected with the cross. I mean, Georgian Monastery of the Cross, Holy Cross of Jerusalem. And an initiative by the monk Prochorus the Iberian to rebuild the monastery was launched with the royal patronage from King Bagrat IV and his mother Maria. And the activity received strong support from the Georgian ethnic monks, those monks who were driving force of Georgian ecclesiastical reform. Jerusalem and the cross as markers of Georgian Christianity appear to have acquired particular significance in a neo Constantinopolitan context. It is obvious that apart from the desire to share the achievements of the Byzantine, Byzantine metropolis, Georgian secular and ecclesiastical elites were willing to demonstrate the national element through established confessional traditions and links. However, apart from a desire, conscious desire and national politics, uh, general um, feature of culture and um, in the regard of uh, traditions and you know, uh, in innovations also should be uh, thought of. In this re uh, regard of particular note is one iconographic detail of the scene of presentation of Christ in the temple, the candle, which is uh, unique for Byzantine iconography and is linked with Candlemas procession of Hippopante of his tradition for Jerusalem. And we have also the name of the Fis Lambroba that corresponds to Candlemas survived in pre ethnic Georgian liturgical texts and chronicles of Catholics, however. Also, we have a very interesting case in 13th century Kiran's paintings. There on the scroll of Jonas and Jonah the prophet, we found exact excerpt from Old Edgari. We have um, also verbal representations of complete Georgianization of Jerusalem practices. For example, in a colophon of the Georgian liturgical calendar copied in the 10th century by Giovanni Zosime in the Great Laura of St. Sabas, the Jerusalem lectionary is named as the Georgian canon, different from all other. We have also other cases with the colorful comments of Giovannis Osime and George the Hagiarite when they want to split Greek, that means Byzantine tradition from Georgian, that means uh, Jerusalem tradition. And it is regarding several feasts, uh, feasts of St. George among them. The diversity of surviving texts of the George, old Georgian tropologion, Yadgari, is also considered by scholars to be yet another manifestation of Georgianization of Jerusalem traditions. And the relevance of Yadgari in ethnic and post ethnic periods is further tested by the presence of its sections in the Menayon compiled by George the Hagiarite as well as in several collections of the 12th and 13th centuries. The same applies to the unique Georgian liturgical collection of texts, Braval Tavi, Polykephalion, which was in wide use between the 8th, 10th century and reflected Hagiopolitan liturgical rite. But it retained importance for a long time. 
References to Ramapali can be found in George of the Hagiarites in Axarion, in the group charters of donations from Catholicos Melchizedek to Tzchete Cathedral and from Grigori Pagurianos to Petritos Monastery. Numerous of the manuscripts of Mraval Tavi contained colophons evidencing their use in later periods from the 15th, 16th century, even 18th century. The evidence, all this evidence attesting to the importance of the homiletic and hymnographic collections of the Hagiopolitan tradition in much later period does not appear so strange considering the present of even of St. James liturgy manuscripts copied in the 13th, 14th, and even in the early 18th century. The 18th century uh, manuscript was donated by, commissioned by Catholicos Domendi of Castle. The phenomenon could be explained by Euthymius, the uh, Hungarian words, the liturgy of St. James is indeed the true one, which was first used in Greece and also in our churches. When St. Basile and blessed John Chrysostom composed liturgies, people chose them because they were short and thus forgot St. James. Now all celebrate the liturgy of St. Chrysostom and uh, the liturgy of St. Basil during the Great Land. But all those who wish to celebrate the liturgies of St. James and St. Peter are completely right to do so. So it seems that this kind of choice uh, was relevant not only for 10th or 11th century, but for much longer period. Uh, it seems that uh, the 10th, 11th century religious and cultural changes uh, were more slightly more complex than suggested by the most of publications, that they were not followed by sudden transformation and rather coexisted and interacted with firmly established traditions at least over two centuries and presumably much longer. The uh, need for revisiting the established scholarly perceptions is further supported by Greek liturgical manuscripts. The practice of incorporating parts from the Jerusalem lectionary, at least through the 14th century, has challenged scholars to, um, to need of the change of accepted periodization of Byzantine liturgical history. I mean, very important article by Daniel Galata from 2012. Even more, uh, a need for the new parodying on Byzantine right have been clearly affirmed recently, a couple of years ago by very important work of Stig Flosho in Dumbertons. So it's obvious that further examination of manuscripts and works of religious art as historical evidence and their broader comparative analysis will lead to more precise answers and better understanding of the importance of different centers for cultural development in medieval Georgia. Consideration of com complex cultural interactions and coexistence of traditions and innovations obviously will contribute to revisiting the Hellenophile perception of medieval Orthodox art as well. The issue is further supported by evidence from Georgian secular culture, along with religious aspirations towards Byzantium in the 11th century elements of social order, secular etir and terminology reflect close ties with Iranian, Arab and Seljuk worlds. The importance of, bo of both Byzantine and Oriental cultures is manifested in Georgian coins surviving from the period. The significance of the Orient in the secular realm is attested by its penetration of its elements, of course, in religious art. Well, the importance of the Caucasus and Georgia for the study of multicultural developments and 
intercultural relations has been widely shared by scholars. At the same time, problems associated with Constantinople central discourse on Orthodox art have long become a subject of concern. However, as I've told, the center periphery model still retains a strong position in relation to Orthodox cultures viewed essentially as part of Byzantium or the Byzantine world. Hence, I hope very much that discussions on Georgian art and culture and this particular platform will uh, play important role in this issue too. That's all. Many thanks.